Hi folks, Ben Hackett here, Ala Prima Pashad. I design these Pashad boxes or paint boxes, I build them. Um, and I've been doing so for a little over 13 years at this point, since about 2007. Uh, today we're going to take a look, just a setup demo. This is the 11 by 14 Yellowstone. It has four panel storage in the lid, four, four wet panels. And it has storage drawers on either side. Put it on the tripod already. And right now it is empty. This is like how you would get it. And we'll take a look at that. And then I'll set it up, you know, as if I were going to paint. This box, this, the height is four and seven eighths inches. The, I don't know, width, I guess, or uh, depth, maybe, uh, 12, 12 inches from here to here. And it's 14 and 5 eighths inches going across the front. Um, and the weight, I just weighed this one, is uh, 6 pounds, 10 ounces, with a little cup and stuff in here. Um, first thing, after you've set up on the tripod, or perhaps you're just using it on a tabletop, you can do that as well. I'm going to open the box up. There's a little D-ring on the front. Pull that door open, down and away, and it's open. I also do engraving, and this is where I engrave. So it might have your name or a say, any kind of saying you like. There's a lot of good artist quotes you can, you can dig up on the interwebs. Uh, okay, opening the box, I'm going to steady it with one hand. Grab it, because the hinges, the friction hinges, we'll just take a quick look at that. Friction hinges on the back, and they hold the lid any position relative to the bottom of the box. And they're strong. So you're just going to push everything all around, like pick the whole tripod up. If you don't, grab the box with one hand. And you notice I grab it over here on the side. A little bit of finishing wax there left over. And I just open it up. And uh, now at this point, these little pins have come up. They lock the drawers in place when the box is closed. And you're ready to slide some drawers open. They have stops on the end. So they will uh, they will catch. It won't come completely out of the box. But you can remove them if you like. Um, and I'll show you how to do that. This, I'd include a little cup, which you could use as a small brush washer if you wanted, or a palette cup of some kind. Um, I just source these because they fit fit nicely in the in the drawer height, which by the way, this is the total overall height from me, from the bottom to this slip here is one and five eighths inches. So in, in, in this side here, underneath this auxiliary pallet, inch and a half. Also throw in this little uh, carabiner clip and that is useful for brush washers and stuff. It can be clipped onto the, clipped onto the edge of the drawer and you can hang a brush washer off of it. I'll set that up later. This is the auxiliary. It's just a little auxiliary palette. And I just put it in this space because that space is available. So you can use it or not, just as you like. But it just sits on the top like that. All right. If you do want to remove the drawers, for example, um, maybe, I don't know, you could conceivably paint in a car with this box. Sometimes you want to hold it on your lap. I don't know. And you just want to take drawers out, uh, clean things, check things, whatever. These work pretty much like what you might find in your kitchen. You just you go all the way to the end till they stop. And then you tip up. And it just comes out. That is how that works. Get that hooked back in. Put this guy in. And uh, yeah, let's, I'll go ahead and um, reconfigure things um, with some panels and stuff in here and paint and things. And, uh, and we'll take a look at that, how we might uh, be setting up for painting. All right, back in a sec. Okay, so I've loaded up the box with some supplies, more like it actually would be if I was setting out to paint or setting up to paint. Um, and I've hung that little, my little backpack there. Um, off the tripod just for a counterweight. This box, when you're looking at backpacks, the key number to keep in mind is this dimension here, 12 inches. That's right about where a lot of backpacks um, sort of limit out. So if you're looking around for something, 
just make sure that the internal capacity, the width would be 12 inches or more, and you should be okay. Usually, regardless of how I intend to have the box um, oriented as I paint, I might have it more angled or less angled, just depends. But it's usually easier to have it a little bit flat because all your supplies are in here. And if you tilt a lot, they're all gonna wanna slide forward. Your panels too. Let's take a look at the panels. Storage in the lid. So I just set this up with a couple of 11 by 14s. Those are just 1 8 panels I cut. And this is the divider. And we'll take a look at that in a little more detail. And there are some uh, uh, 9 by 12s in there, I guess. 9 or 10 by 12s. Um, so yeah, this is a 12 inch spacing. And there's also an 8 inch spacing where you could place that divider if you wanted to carry a couple of 8 by 10s or six by eights, etc. eight by eight. Um, yeah, so I got those in there. This is the brush quiver in this box because it has two drawers. The sort of uh, longest available area is in this palette. Um, and so I developed this so that you can store your brushes here and keep them out of any paint you have laid out on the palette. The palette is three quarters of an inch deep. So it's intended for you to be able to lay paint out um, and close up later without having to clean up all the paint. As long as you aren't laying out big globs like over in the corner here, you can see these brushes that what they're gonna do, right? They're gonna close down like this into this area, right? So you just wanna keep a bunch of paint out of this area, like some mixed paint would be okay, but anyway. So right, so these are going to be, these are supported there in this brush quiver. And I'm just using the lower panel holder ledges with this elastic band to restrain them here. And then a little quiver pocket over here for the butt ends. So that is how that works. Um, yeah, we'll open some drawers. Crank that open. Um, there are both notches and brush holes in each drawer. So you can set up however you like. Um, uh, I, it's just habitual for me. I tend to put my paint over here. So I put some paint in there. And I tend to have miscellaneous stuff over here. Um, not much in there at the moment. I just threw a palette knife in, uh, some palette cups. Uh, you know, color shaper and pencil and stuff like that. And here's my little cup and a rag. Like if I was gonna paint that way, if I was just gonna have a brush cleaning rag. Go ahead and pull some of these guys out. So like I said, these can either um, sit in these notches or like that, for example. One of the things about painting, uh, you know, with all your plain air gear, there's a lot of just moving things around and getting it set up the way you want. Um, so another option would be, let's take this guy. There's usually magnets around, which is handy for palette knives. Um, they can just take a rest over there. Um, color shaper, go in there, try that, try that. So I'm just sticking some brushes in these holes real quick. Take a look just quickly at the sort of capacity we would have in this drawer for um, paint. I have a 150 mil white in there. Um, you could use a 200 mil. In this case, I just grabbed some paint. So I have uh, four, seven, nine, nine 37 mil tubes. And you can see that they're in various degrees of being squeezed out. But um, if you went crazy, you could pack quite a bit more than nine in there. I don't even know, but you could safely, I would definitely say you could do 12, 12, 37 mils and a 150 or 200 mil white in that um, area. So that's what I got. I would then lay out paint. I tend to lay out on the edges and then pull down into the center area for mixing. And you can also, if you have a palette cup, I don't usually paint with one. I just, I don't even know if this will work for sure. But uh, you can, you could put it on this uh, auxiliary 
little palette and set it like that. So that would work. So you got a cup over here. You can access your paint when you need to. Just pull that up. Uh, another deal is we could take this uh, little carabiner. Um, for some, for a lot of people, <laughs> works fine for me, but for a lot of people, there's a little cup like that. Might be handy as a palette cup. As a brush cleaner though, mm, can be a stretch probably. Um, if you like to keep your brushes really clean. So you can take this carabiner if you prefer this kind of brush washer. Um, you could clip it there. You know, you could use that little keychain ring deal. Or you could just do that. And then you can hook it off the side of the drawer and be set up like that. All right, now let's grab a panel. Say I'm working on that still life there. This is the lower, the lower ledge of the panel holder, and this is the upper ledge. It's spring loaded, so it's gonna squeeze the panel in between. Um, I don't know, still life here. I mean, just for demo. I'll grab this guy, this 11 by 14, and we'll put him in portrait, say. So I'm just setting those roughly, roughly even. They don't have to be perfect because the panel itself you can use to um, even them out, right? This is the rigid part that's gonna balance these two, that's gonna tie them together. So the fact that they're two separate units does not matter. It's actually kind of handy for um, adjusting them. It's a little easier to adjust one at a time. This is all a magnet driven system. The magnets are strong and um, yeah, but this is, I've, so I popped that panel in. I've just kind of done that. Um, just tapping things in to make sure it's all set. And at that point, um, I'd be, you know, I've laid it, say I've laid out my paint and Kind of ready to go. I just threw, if I were doing brush cleaning, and I have some threads there. Don't need, but yeah, if you if you want to use a rag for your brush cleaning, great. Another little thing you can do is utilize um, the D rings for the hand strap on the front. Those are available and can be shared for you know you could you could clip a shoulder strap on those. Um, I just like to do this sometimes. All I've done is taken a bungee cord, run it through these paper towels, and that is going to be a handy way to uh, keep some paper towels if I want to do some, use those for, uh, use that for brush cleaning instead of this rag. I just did that to demonstrate that it is possible if you, uh, it is possible to, to set up if you're going to use this, a small cup for a brush cleaner, if you're going to tuck a rag in here, um, you can have everything except the tripod, you know, and just have it all in the box and just carry the box. It's possible to do. I mean, it's often handy to have it in a backpack with some other stuff. There's no doubt about that. And that's usually how I would go about doing it, but it's, it's possible. And certainly if you're working from a home base situation, which might be a car, or it might literally be your home, um, and you're not going very far, then it makes a lot of sense. Just grab the tripod, grab the box, go set up, paint, done, walk back and reconfigure if you need to. So that is the basic setup. Okay, so while I've set up here um, with the box in a fairly flat sort of orientation, um, not a lot of angle on it, Sometimes it is advantageous to change that angle or it might be something you prefer to do. Um, so yeah, that's certainly possible um, to do. I'm just gonna scooch some things and things will jump around. But um, you, can, you can certainly do it at more of an angle if you like. And the, the lid is highly adjustable. So that's not a problem. To paint more in this kind of position, that works just fine. And for that matter, if you're, maybe you want to do a little watercolor, 
Um, the lid will go flat, so you could conceivably set up like this more if you wanted to. And uh, perhaps lay out a palette here, a watercolor travel palette. Perhaps one that is sized so that when it's folded up it will store in a drawer. And uh, obviously I would set this up a little differently if I were doing that, but you know, it's possible to, to approach the box this way, right? And, and if you're doing watercolor. So you got your palette over here, and then you're working on this in a more wet into wet, you know, more flat position, if you like. So there are different things you can do, you know, it's just kind of, I try to make it as flexible as I can so that it's more uh, a question of what you prefer rather than what you have to do um, for setting up. Okay. Back to back, you can see how everything is stored in here so nothing is touching anything. Your wet paint is going to be fine. And then I'm like, oh hey, I think I'll paint a 9x12. 9x12s are kind of down in there and a 6x8 or 8x10 is going to be even more so. But with the divider, as long as you can grab the divider, the top of the divider, there's a stop on the end, and I'm just going to slide it, sliding it straight up on its little track. I'm not pulling away or down. I'm just scooching it straight up, you know, just nice and patient. And it's going to bring the panels up with it. That's all of a sudden much easier to grab. So I grab one, 9 by 12. I can go back and slide back down if you want. And there's a nine by twelve on there. And then I decide, well, I would like to I'd, I'd like to work with it higher up. Have the box lower down, have that higher up. Um, these uh, magnets are quite strong, but um, you can. Like I said, it's sometimes easier to work with them one at a time. So I'm going to set it up like halfway up or something. Pull that out. And there you go. Right? So you have a, when you get to smaller panels, you can paint way up on the box. Um, way, way up. In the case of like a 6x8 or something, you could be all the way at the top if you wanted to. Um, and. Again, if you look at how this works, what your limitation is, is the vertical distance between the two. The horizontal is kind of theoretically kind of unlimited, um, but you do have uh, over 18 inches here. So. so there I've just put a, a 14 by 18 in, in portrait. So it's 18 inches tall. That is a demo of what the box might look like set up and ready to paint. All right, I'm just gonna, let's just walk through um, breaking down, huh? So I'm done painting. And uh, it's important to keep in mind when you're done painting, like I said, this, this palette area is recessed. It's all fine. You don't really have to do much. I do like to, um, I mean, for me personally, to season a wooden palette, it will get a very nice uh, patina on it as you paint with oil paint. You're rubbing pigment and linseed oil into it over and over. And as long as you uh, just take care of it right, it will develop a super smooth, um, neutral gray patina on it that's just really nice to paint on. It's not very reflective. When you're outside, um, it's not heavy like glass. And the important thing to keep in mind with wood is just that you do not want to dig at it with something really sharp like a razor knife. That's just going to uh, cut it up. So use something relatively dull. I use like a palette knife like this. And after I've painted, and this is my mixing area, I just, the real heavy excess, I just scrape off, right? with the palette knife. And when I'm done with getting the bulk of it off, I just take my last rag or paper towel and just rub it down until it gets that 
till it's mostly gone. I don't go at it with thinner or anything. I want that linseed to build up and uh, saturate this completely until it's until I said it's got that super smooth, uh, glossy gray going on. So I do that, and then what you want to avoid is get letting paint build up heavily on this rim. Any, anywhere where it's going to interfere with wood, where it needs to come together, parts where they need to come together, that's going to be problematic. So you just take a couple of seconds and you don't have to get all the paint off. You just, you just have to knock it down. I mean, it can, the, letting your box get paint and colors all over it is fine. Don't worry about it. You just got to watch out for really heavy paint buildup. That can get problematic. So knock those down. Knock this down a little, maybe. That basic maintenance out of the way, then let's go ahead and get that guy off. Um, we would know where to store this guy, obviously, but he'd be in a backpack if I was using something that big. But you see what, toss that in there. Then I'm going to be, I would be putting brushes away. Um, and to do that, it's just going to be setting up like this, right? So you're just creating this little zone here to uh, put some brushes away in the brush quiver. If you're using it, you certainly don't have to. One other thing I should point out about the divider, I almost forgot, I'll stick this in. Um, it is not, besides the fact that it has two different positions to put it in, it is not, you know, it's not required that you use it, obviously. If you're not, if you'd rather just carry more 11 by 14 panels, you can do that. Um, and if you're not using it at all, it is sized so that it will um, store in the drawer. So you do not need to be carrying that all the time or using it all the time. It's just up to you. Um, you can carry some different panels in your size panels in your backpack and then figure it out after you paint. Okay, now these posts, again, just to point out, those are gonna hold the drawers closed when the box is closed up and prevent them from accidentally sliding open. So just check. Those are going up and down freely. It's all working, everything's good, boom. Door closed, I'm ready to pull it off the tripod, and all done. So that is a basic, uh, just basically a quick walkthrough of a way you might set it up. This again is the 11 by 14 Yellowstone, and it's the largest box I make. It's, uh, when you load it up with paint, the, you know, like I said, it's uh, just over six and a half pounds empty. So you load up with paint, you could easily be pushing uh, 10 pounds, paint and panels and stuff. And you just need to make sure that you get, you're looking for a tripod, if you're gonna use a tripod, that is uh, able to support that kind of weight. There's plenty of them, that's not, a, not an issue. Um, and the price range is vast, so I do not sell any particular tripod or anything. Plus I'm so small, uh, manufacturers not be interested in working with me whatsoever on that but uh th there's so many choices and i'm happy to help uh point you in some different directions of things to research when you're doing that but like i said it's not a problem finding a tripod that can support support this box um, but it is the biggest one i make and i don't consider it a backpacking box or anything for me this is a um sort of a base station box that you're going to use if you're traveling, you know, for me hiking, I don't know, less than a mile or two, I suppose, but that's obviously going to vary depending on, on your particular preference. Okay. Once again, 11 by 14 Yellowstone. And my name is Ben, Ben Haggett, allpremiumpashad.com. Check it out if you like. And uh, thanks for coming along on the in the indoor tour today. All right. Take care, everybody.